All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon. And thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I hope you find this webinar of value. You should be learning a lot about JIRA work management and a lot of other tools that should help you. Uh, this is JIRA work management for all. My name is Brian Dar. I am a solutions architect, a safe program consultant, and Atlassian certified expert here with XBM. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you're here. So thanks for joining. So let's dive right in. Uh, a lot of times work can feel like a dumpster fire, uh, in particular when you're coordinating across lots of teams and lots of people within those teams. Today, I'd like to show you some processes and tools that we've built using the Atlassian ecosystem that will hopefully make your work uh, and maybe even your personal life easier. Uh, specifically, these tools are gonna show you, or I guess the demos that we're gonna show will help you make work more visible within your team. Uh, it'll help you provide clear next steps in processes for your team. Uh, these tools and the things I'm gonna show you will help make work more collaborative and they will be uh, flexible. So you'll be able to um, update them as your processes change. And all of this, no matter what team you work for, whether it's uh, HR, legal, finance, marketing, any team can use these tools. So our agenda today, uh, we're gonna do this introduction right now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Agile, which uh, comes from software, but it's a, it's a methodology that can be used across any team. I'm gonna give many examples in the tools about how to do these, uh, you know, how to make your work life easier. And then we're gonna do Q&A at the end. <clears throat> um, this is using the Atlassian tool suite, uh, which is a fairly inexpensive tool suite. Uh, you may already have it in your company. And everything that I'm gonna show you here is stuff that you can build yourself with, it, with these tools. Uh, it's not hard and it's kind of fun, I think. So let's hop right in. Um, really quick, let me talk about Agile because everything I'm gonna show you revolves around the Agile mindset. Uh, the Agile mindset is not about doing more work in less time. It's not about being busy. It's not about TPS reports. It is about generating more value with less work. And the tools that we're gonna show are, are built around this idea of providing short incremental, um, incremental progress and making it visible and doing it collaboratively. Agile responds to a central challenge of business, which is how to provide quick, continuous value at scale. And if you do it, which we'll talk about more in a minute, it'll make you much more competitive. Uh, being agile makes you more responsive to both your, your internal customers and your external customers. Uh, in the case of HR, you're more responsive to new hires and employees, for example. In the case of marketing, you're more responsive to, uh, to um, uh, shifts in the ecosystem. You also wind up building quality into the process when you, when you function in a more agile way because things are visible, things are collaborative, we see problems early. Lastly, uh, working in a small incremental agile way allows you to, to deliver value faster, which shortens the time between need and delivery. And it doesn't have to be huge chunks of value that you're delivering. It can be small incremental pieces. We don't have to build everything perfect right away. And the tools that we're gonna use today will actually help you make these small incremental changes. My team's just doing to do in progress done. All of a sudden we need a review step. No problem, we can add a review step right in the workflow, it's easy to do. And then we're off to bigger and better things. Um, specifically, uh, agile companies and agile teams create small self-organizing and cross-functional teams that are designed to deliver value constantly to their customers. It's all about delivering value. And so, so this whole agile mindset that I'm talking about is not you know, spending lots of time building huge requirements documents, not making everything exactly perfect right away, but instead, you know, trying small things, seeing, hey, does this work? Is this what my is this what my customers want? And then if it is, great, we continue down that path. If it's not, we stop and we pivot. And again, these tools are going to help you do that. So what are these tools? Um, well, Atlassian is the company that makes them. We're an Atlassian solution partner, which is why we're doing this webinar. And uh, specifically, the tools are right here on the slide. Jira Work Management, Jira Software, Jira Service Management, Confluence, Trello, Bitbucket, Jira Line. If you haven't heard of any of these, no problem. We're going to demonstrate uh, the first five today. 
Uh, these tools are ubiquitous. They are probably already in your organization. We often work with business teams that are ready to purchase them, and then they're really surprised to find out that their company already has them. Uh, from there, it's just gaining the knowledge about how to, how to customize the tools to your team's needs. If you don't have the tools, no problem. They're not expensive. They all come with free trials. They all have free tiers. Uh, there's no need to get your VP of, of procurement out there. Um, but what are these tools for? Well, specifically, they are designed for teams. They are collaborative, flexible, and scalable. You can use this um, on a very small team, or these are used by major Fortune 50 enterprises as well. <clears throat> they scale up extremely well. Jira specifically, we have Jira Work Management, Jira Software, and Jira Service Management. That's all part of a package of work tracking tools. These help you plan, track, and visualize your work. And you, can and, and you can plan and track this work at the team level or at the executive level and anywhere in between. Uh, Confluence down here, that is a wiki style documentation tool. And paired together, these JIRA products and Confluence interact really well. So you can track your work and you can document the design and you can document the changes and you can have conversations around them. It's a very communicative suite. If you haven't worked in this way before, which is you know, online collaboration, you know, rapid iteration, it is quite a change. But once you see it, it's pretty amazing. Um, you're no longer working off of a spreadsheet living on your machine. You're, you're working off of a central repository. Um, yeah, uh, the, other, the other great thing about these tools is that you don't have to have status reports. Um, because the tools make the work visible. It is important to note that in the context of, let's say, HR, uh, these tools aren't going to replace something like your HRIS. They're not going to replace a system that you already have. Rather, they help fill in the gaps. They help track the work in between the things that your other tools are tracking. And they also connect really well to these other tools. Um, there's great APIs. We have software developers that have connected these to many, many different systems as well. All right, so we're going to look at some practical examples of these tools today. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at five different solutions that we've helped build for our clients, and you can build for yourself too, or we can help you build them. Uh, all of these are based on the Agile principles that we discussed, and hopefully uh, in 2022, a majority of these will resonate very well with you for the need to be online and remote and collaborating all at the same time. So we're going to start with task management. This demonstration is going to be for anyone, uh, legal teams, marketing teams, individuals, anybody. And the problem is teams are often not sure collectively about what's next. What do we have to do? They're also often not sure about, is everything up to date? You know, is this document ready to go? Where are we on that report? And we also don't know sometimes who's in charge of, of what, what we're looking at. So the solution is a central task management system with multiple views to help us visualize the work that we need to do. And the tool that I'm going to show this off in first is called Jira Work Management. So let's hop over here. There we go. All right. So this is Jira. And if, you, if you've never seen it before, I think the screen is a lot to look at. It, it, it can be overwhelming. So let me point you just to the left side for a moment. We're in what I'm calling the accounting project. This is a space that we have made in this tool, Jira, where my accounting team is going to track their work. And then within this project, we have things called issues or work items that you can see here on the right side, accounting one, accounting two, accounting three. Uh, these are all pieces of work that my team is working on and needs to deliver. So if I look at this table here, they call it a list view. It looks a lot like a spreadsheet, but this is a live centrally managed spreadsheet. And if I come in and edit something, just like in Google Docs or in Office 360, we'll see other people uh, editing here as well. But each of these work items has a lot of information. We have the summary, we have the status of the work item that we can change here. We have the person assigned to the work. We have a due date. We have priority. And then we can you know, arbitrarily label this work too if we want to do a different kind of analysis on it. 
We also have some date fields, like when was this item created? When was it updated? Who made the item? And we can add more fields too from our database. We actually have a lot of fields in the background if we need to further categorize our work. In this list view, we can also filter. So we can say, show me everything that's assigned to me and I can work on these things. Well, uh, I'm working on getting, a, getting the gross profit margin approved. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready to start working on, on a budget wrap up and my final revision is in the feedback phase. Or we can filter just on done work that our team has, has gotten done recently. We can filter on things that are due this week. And then we can also group work as well. We can group by status. You know, show me, show me everything in the to-do status. Show me everything in the approval status. We can also group by assignee. So show me everything that Brian's working on versus David versus Vicky. Or we can group by priority. You know, show me everything that's the highest priority. So this is all, you know, a great way to visualize all the work together and see what needs to be done. But that's not the only way we can visualize the work that our team might need to see. All of the same work, and let me, let me clear this, all of these items here can be viewed in a different way on this board. This is called a Kanban board. If you're not used to that, don't worry. But this is all of the same work items that we saw before now in columns based on, on the status. This is a really great way to work. Um, so, so here we have everything on the left side that we need to do. In the middle, we have everything that we're working on in progress, everything in the feedback phase, everything in the approval phase, and then everything you know finished. And I can move the work across these columns as I go. And the whole point of this view is to see bottlenecks. We can see that we have way too much work to do, or we have not enough work in progress, or we have way too much work in progress and we're not actually getting anything done. We've started all these projects, but we're not stopping anything. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe my manager is overwhelmed because there's just too much in the feedback column for them to do. So this helps show you bottlenecks in your work. There's also a calendar view where we take the dates on each of those pieces of work. Again, exactly the same pieces of work here. And we can, we can click into each of them and see all the information about that work item. Um, so we have all the dates showing up in a, in a calendar view here. And while we're at it, uh, let, me, let me show up this work item just a little bit more. The, there is a whole conversation that can happen around an individual item. Like I can say, hey, Wade, um, where are we on this? And we can have a conversation in this, um, in this work item. We can also see a history of all of the changes that were ever made about it. We can see uh, time tracked if we're doing time tracking. And then over here, we can see all of, the, all of the categorical information about this. We can see who it's assigned to, who the reporter is, its due date, priority, the department that's working on it, the start date, the, um, the parent, we can, we can run automation about it. And then there's lots of other fields that we can add to. Also, actually, one other neat feature is if I really care about this work item, I can come here and I can click watch and I'll get an email every time somebody updates this work item, which is really helpful for, for you know, centrally tracking everything. Now, again, I don't have to have a status report every week. I can just come to JIRA and see where my department's work is. Uh, lastly, there is a timeline view as well that will take all of those pieces and show them across a timeline. I like this view a lot. Um, it helps me do major planning. So I can see all my work items. I can also actually create a hierarchy of work as well. And I can show parents and children across this timeline as well. So I could have an initiative that takes three months. I can see when I think it's going to start and when it's going to stop. And I can see all the children beneath it. There are some other things going on here too. There's a, there's a simple intake form that I can create. I'm not gonna show that off now, but if your team is struggling with, with intake, Jira Work Management provides for a simple intake form that you can point all of your stakeholders to. They can submit it there and then you can triage it appropriately. And most importantly, we, we wanna get that work into our work tracking tool so we can prioritize it. If we're working out of our inboxes and our spreadsheets, and our whiteboards and our post-it notes, and those are all separate places 
we're not really comparing work and we don't have a proper prioritization. All right, so that is JIRA work management in a very short summary. Uh, again, I'm gonna do uh, Q and A at the end of all this. And so uh, if you have any questions, you can start typing them in uh, in the Q and A box, but uh, otherwise we're gonna move on to project management. So a lot of our clients deal with project management. This is for example, for a PMO team or an HR team or a marketing team, any team that does a lot of projects. And the problem is that the projects that we work on uh, can cause misalignment. We can have delayed handoffs. We wind up needing manual status reports. Uh, there's lots of missing information. Also things like 2020 come along once every hundred years and blow everything up and all of a sudden nobody knows where anybody is and what they're working on. So the solution here again is to make work visible and to automate reporting. So um, next I'm gonna show you project management using a different part of JIRA, but still the same base product, as well as Confluence, which is the documentation tool. So let's hop back over here and start here. So when I'm, uh, uh, yeah, just lost my train of thought, sorry about that. Uh, here I am looking at JIRA and I am a marketing team member managing a project that I'm calling Project Alpha. Just like over in Jira Work Management, I've got all of these fields over here that talk about what's going on in this project. So I've got the person that's responsible for it, again, responsible for my project alpha. I've got project size, the executive sponsor, the stakeholders, target start date, target end date, when it is absolutely due, priority, and then any other field that I wanna put in. I also have the status of the project up here as well. And then in the middle, I've got all of this larger context information. What's the background of the project? What are the business objectives? What's the scope? What are the assumptions? Obviously this project has gone through a workflow that has refined it up until getting into in progress. It started in a funnel. We then set it up in to do. The team then picked it up and started working on it. We can also move it to on hold. And again, we have you know, central reporting already about what's the status of this project. And then we also have children living under the project. So I've got milestones and tasks relating to this project living under here. And I can see where all that work is. Task one and task two are done, three and four are in progress, task five is still to do. We can break out lots of other tasks underneath this. And then this project is referenced on other pages elsewhere. And we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go show that next. And I can also have, have conversations around this project. Hey, where are we on this project? What's going on? Now let me zoom out just a level and look at many projects. Because obviously we're not, we're not just working on one. Just like over in Jira Work Management, I've got this board here where I can see all of our projects. I can see the funnel to do in progress on hold and done. And this helps us not take on too much work. That's the whole point of a Kanban board is, is helping us with, with um, limiting work and process. Because if we're doing six projects, we're probably not doing any of them particularly well, depending on the size of our team. So instead, I've got my funnel to do in progress and here's my project alpha. And as soon as it's done, we can slide it over to the done column over here, or we can open it up and we can change its status to done here as well. And it'll be reflected in both places. Um, it is important always to keep information valuable so that people keep it updated. We want this to not just be another system to update, we want it to be a source of truth. And this board is not the only way to show where my projects are. Uh, I'm going to move over into Confluence now, which, which is what I'm using to create a very ro robust reporting dashboard around my projects. So now I'm in a different product. Uh, this is Confluence. Confluence is a documentation tool. It on the, on the left side has a series of pages and then I can click into those pages and then I see the page over here on the right. So for example, I've got a meeting notes section here and this is a meeting notes summary page and this is a specific meeting note page. But I'm gonna come here to my project alpha reporting page. And what I've done is I have built a report in Confluence that has all the context that I need that is referencing information back over in JIRA that people are updating as they get their work done. 
So the first thing I see on my project alpha summary page is I've got a team calendar here helping me understand where where everybody is that that is that is on this project. We're importing personal calendars. We are adding company events. We have a you know basically a calendar reference here. I'm going to collapse the left side to make this page much bigger. Over here on the right, I've got information about Project Alpha. I've got a subjective set of statuses. The, the overall status I think is on track, resource status potentially off track, budget status way off track, schedule status on track. And so I can provide these, these subjective ratings for when I report to people. I also have project details over here. And so these are pulled straight from JIRA, target start, target end, status, project size, sponsor, due date. Whenever those fields are updated in JIRA, they will update over here in Confluence. So I don't have to keep these in sync at all. And then I just made a little reference for the statuses that I can copy up and, and uh, put in my manual status updates up here, which again, those kind of status updates, they're always subjective. All right, coming down here, I've got a progress report. So this is all of the tasks that relate to that project. This is uh, all the ones that are, that are currently being worked on. And I've got a pie chart here showing me the relative completion. And then I have a list of all of my completed work and when it was completed. And then I've got all of the project details from over in JIRA showing over here as well. I got my stakeholders, I got my background, business objectives. And so whenever I update JIRA, this page updates also. And then I have our design spec documents attached to this page too. Now, if somebody ever wants to do a report on this, I can just come over here to my, um, to my Chrome add-ons and I can use this go full page extension and it will do a full page screenshot of this live always updated report and then turn that into a PDF that I can archive if I need to, and I can send to my executive sponsors and they can see the overall status up here. They can see the current work and how far we're done and they can see the calendar, all that information. I could even download that and then drop it onto this page as an attachment as a permanent ongoing status report. So now my status report just became incredibly easy. Um, also, this is not the only project that I'm working on. So I have also made a, a, a project dashboard, kind of like the Kanban board that we saw before. I've got a dashboard showing all of my projects. So here I have a table of project alpha, project beta, project delta, epsilon and gamma. And you can see, and sorry, I'm scrolling all around. I've got the screen blown up really big so people can see it better. I've got the overall status of all the projects, the resource status, the budget, and, and schedule status of all my projects together. I've got my project details here, all right next to each other. So I can compare all five projects at once. And this information is being pulled from both JIRA and the, the subjective status that I put over here on Project Alpha. Then down below, I've got a roadmap. Ooh, clearly, I need to update my roadmap. <laughs> Oops. Um, so here I've got all of my projects over in JIRA, the, the target start and end dates, the statuses, the overall progress of their children. And then I've got, um, and then I've got the roadmap here. Let me, let me collapse this so you can see it. And then I've got all of that in a roadmap here so I can see when I think it's gonna be done. So that's simple aggregated status reporting. <clears throat> Next, I would like to show you guys how to do onboarding with these tools because onboarding and hiring is very important. We really want to have, um, to have uh, uh, everybody tracked so we know where people are in the onboarding process. Um, so next, I'm gonna show you that. And I'm also gonna show you how to fix intake with your teams too, because I know that a lot of people have problems with 360 degrees of intake and prioritization. And then the last demo that, that I'm going to show coming up is um, how to do centralized knowledge management for your team, because knowledge management is also a team challenge. Uh, let me come back to my slideshow for a second. All right. Um, first, before I go into those other demos, I'd like to talk very briefly about us as a company and why you might be listening to us right now. 
Um, Xpium is a platinum solution partner with Atlassian. Atlassian makes these tools, but they don't really do services around these tools. So they rely on their partner network, of which we are the top tier, uh, to, to provide training and implementation services around those tools. So specifically Xpium, we focus on these three major areas. Training, so we do fr free webinars like this. We also do paid classes. Um, you know, short, sh short term boot camps. We do private training for companies. We do public training. We also do consulting. So we help people implement these solutions. Every solution that you see here so far is something that we help build for clients. Uh, but but if, if you don't know about Jira, you can just build it yourself. Um, but, but we help people implement and customize and, and make, make Jira work for them. Jira Confluence, Bitbucket, Jira Align, Jira service management, all of those products. And then we also have a full stack development shop that does custom development. So uh, if you have an integration or, or some kind of custom thing that you need to build and it's not available in the tool and it's not available in the marketplace, we can build it for you. Um, I would like to show you at the end of this, a list of upcoming free events that you will hopefully gain some benefit from kind of like this webinar, um, but I'll show those at the end. All right, so hiring, and onboarding. Let's talk about the challenge of that. So this particular demonstration is for anyone who does onboarding. Um, probably HR specifically, but you know, a lot of a lot of departments do their own onboarding, and it's nice to be able to track that. So the challenge that we're solving for is teams have unique processes, and they need those processes to scale. Those processes change over time. So we need to be able to update those over time. And oftentimes people are unsure about what's next. Where is so-and-so in the hiring pipeline? Did we send them their offer letter? Have they accepted? Where's their background check? All of that. So the solution is custom workflows that have data validation uh, and also custom workflows that, that do automated downstream task, cre uh, task creation. And the workflow itself provides guardrails to make sure that people are in compliance as they're getting hired. And the tool that we're going to use is Jira software or Jira service management. Or you could honestly do this in Jira work management too. Um, I, we just happen to build this, the next solution that I'm going to show you in Jira software. Don't need that. All right. So what I'm showing you here is a Kanban board with cards representing people that are being onboarded. And so each of these cards is one of those JIRA issues. If I click into it, it has information, right? It's got the person responsible for this phase of onboarding. It's got the person that made the, uh, made the record. And then I can put in fields like, you know, name, phone number, address, title, salary, whatever I need to put in here. And then I can have a conversation around it as well. So I can say, you know, uh, well, let's see, Anthony is, is, the, person, is the person onboarding um, Florence right now. And I can ask Anthony, uh, where is Florence? I can ask him where she's in the process. Although I don't have to because I've got the status of her right up here. She's in training right now. And then as she moves around, I can move her across each of these statuses. So let's look at the workflow because that's the real important part about this onboarding. So this is a workflow that we built with a client. Um, and this workflow in particular is for a tier one insurance agent. And so that agent gets recruited. They then get scheduled for training. They then go into a training class they then, uh, after completing training, they're in a peer mentoring phase. And then finally, after all that, they are good to go on the phones, no follow-up needed from an, from an onboarding perspective. Now, at any time, they may withdraw uh, you know, prematurely when they're recruited. Or when they're scheduled, they may withdraw or they may be a no-show, in which case those are terminal statuses. Also, at any time, we may need to let them go. You know, maybe we find out in training that they're not a good fit or, or we find out in peer mentoring that they're stealing from the company or who knows. Um, but in that case, at, at any point in the workflow, their manager can click this request termination button, 
which you saw uh, here, right here. And if I click that button, that will then go create a request in an HR project. That request then runs through its own workflow where the manager has to approve, the HR manager has to approve, legal has to you know, weigh in on it maybe. And then once that termination is approved, that HR workflow comes into this workflow, picks up the person wherever they are, and drops them into the terminated status. So that's a nice way to handle all of that without having to worry about you know, where somebody is and are we aligned on firing them. That's the tier one agent. We also set up a tier two agent, which is much more complex. Tier two has way more statuses. So let's look at uh, Ricky McGill, for example, and just point out some of the differences. So in this case, a tier two agent runs through not only uh, training, but they also have to pass certain tests. They get certified, they go through advanced training, then they have peer mentoring. But sometimes when they get hired, they, they already have the certifications they need. So we can skip the workflow here and jump them to certified. Or if they've already worked with us before, and they've already been through the advanced training, we can skip the advanced training and jump them over to peer mentoring. We have the same request termination option. And then one really neat thing that this workflow is doing that I can't necessarily demonstrate so quickly in a webinar is that uh, each of these transitions between statuses, these are popping up screens and are requiring information from somebody to say, hey, you know, how many times did they take the test? What was their score? or you know, please review uh, you know, how their training was. Also, in every transition, little bits of automation are happening. When someone moves from, from certified into advanced training, the person responsible for, for the person being onboarded automatically gets added to the ticket when they move over into advanced training. They become the assignee of the ticket which means that if I'm an instructor, I can log into JIRA and see every person that is assigned to me and who I'm responsible for in their phase of, of um, onboarding. The other really cool thing that's happening in this workflow is when somebody moves into certified, there's a bunch of automations that run in the background that, that kick off tasks in other teams' projects in JIRA, specifically the... Um, uh, the the IT team, and that that IT team gets gets tasks for you know setting up a phone line, setting up a laptop, you know basically preparing the office environment for this for this new employee, and those those items are all linked and related. So I can click on on the onboarding person, and I can see where is their phone line, where is their laptop, where is their equipment, and the termination automation automatically removes all of those downstream tasks so that we don't have somebody working on a laptop for somebody that was just fired this morning. So there's a lot of automation here. And just like I mentioned before, you know, this is a highly regulated industry. So compliance is very important and auditability is very important. So everything that is, that is uh, done gets tracked here in history. And even the workflow supports compliance. Nobody is going to get to being on the phones without having first gone through certifications. It just can't happen because the workflow stops it. All right, so that's that's onboarding. Um, let me make sure that I'm catching everything. Yeah. All right. Oh, also, um, Jira does a lot of great in-the-box reporting as well. So I even have a dashboard up here that is, that is an onboarding dashboard. And this is taking all the information that I just showed you about all of these agents being onboarded. And this filter is showing me people that I'm currently responsible for. This filter is showing me all of the current tier one agents, all of the tier two agents. And then over here, I've got some pie charts just showing off you know, some other re uh, reporting options here. All right, let's talk. Uh, we have two demos to go, service desks and uh, knowledge management. Hopefully, you guys are getting lots of ideas to use in your own companies. So service desks, um, who is this demo for? This is, again, for everybody. Everybody can use a service desk. Uh, what, what problems do service desks solve? Well, 
a lot of companies or a lot of teams, I should say, deal with not having clear prioritization. They deal with that multi-channel intake that I mentioned before. They've got phone calls and emails and bosses and post-it notes and people knocking on their doors. Um, and then there's also no visibility into the process for the person that requested the work. You know, let's say that I've, I've got a legal contract that I need to review or that I need legal to review for me. I send it to legal, but if I send it in an email, I don't know where they are on it. I don't know where it is in their process. So a service desk provides visibility into that process step. So the solution to this is to create a service desk with clear intake forms, prioritized queues of work, automatically updating the requester, and possibly self-help knowledge articles. And for this, we're gonna use Jira Service Management and Confluence. So this is a different view of JIRA. We haven't seen this before, but this is the help center. And this is sort of the front end portal for somebody to come in and get help from, from a given team. So for example, um, let's see, let me, let me decide what I wanna show you. Uh, all right, yeah, so first of all, we, we have multiple help desks. We, we have an IT service help desk. We have an HR service help desk. We have a facilities service desk. And if I go into the facilities service desk, for example, I've got a list here of everything that I can do with facilities. I can report a maintenance issue. I can request a desk move. I can request an event setup. So let's say that I report a maintenance issue. I've got a form that I have to fill out. What's the issue that needs your attention? What kind of maintenance is it? Minor, major safety um, replacement. Where's the maintenance issue located? What are the details? Please attach a photo. And then I can submit that ticket and then, and then they receive it on the back end, which is quite helpful. So let's look at, for example, um, coming to HR. And you know, I can land in here and I can say, I need to change my name. You know, I just got married, uh, I have a new name, and I can see personal information change request FAQ from the HR service desk. That's probably an article that I wanna read. Um, I can click here. It will open up that help article. It'll tell me everything I, I need to know about changing my name in the company. And if that doesn't help, I can still raise a request. Otherwise, I can come into my HR service desk. I can raise a request. And I can come down here to this you know, change request. S send a request to make changes to your information. So here, uh, I'm going to change my name. I need to change my last name. Uh, new name is Smith, got married last week. And I can provide a copy of the marriage license here or whatever. I send this off. And then here, I can always come back to this portal and see where is the status. Or I, or I will also just get email updates every time it changes. So I've got the information here. I can communicate with HR. Hello, where is this? Uh, I can see the status, so HR hasn't started working on it yet. I can add my, my boss to this so, so that they're aware of the name change. So I can you know, add this, you know, let's say that Wade is my boss and I would like Wade to, to, to know when my, when my name change is made. And I can also come up here and find my request in this, in this request list as well. Now on the back end, somebody in HR is managing this ticket on the back end. So they can see this ticket back here. They can see who requested it. They know it's a name change request and they can go ahead and take care of that. They can move it into in progress. As soon as they do, I'll get an update that says that HR has moved this to in progress. I don't have to worry about following up with them, which is really convenient. And then let's say that HR has a, a lot of work going on. That's okay. We have a series of queues let's say open and unassigned. So here is, my, here is my newest name change request here. It's all the way at the bottom because we have set up service level agreement timers and this queue is sorted by that. So if I come all the way over here, I can see that this one is due at uh, 11.39 a.m. on June 10th based on um, 
based on, on the criteria that I've set in the service desk. We, we, we do name change requests within a week, I guess, is what this SLA is telling me. Um, yeah, or, or I can resort this queue in a different way. But, but what's nice is that I've got this queue telling me what, what needs to be done next according to what we've agreed on for, for, our, for our stakeholders. Now, I will say that if you don't provide SLAs, service level agreements for your stakeholders, they will come up with them on their own. And for them, it's probably always instant or maybe 24 hours. And maybe it takes a lot longer to do a name change request. So we can, we can set up an appropriate SLA and we can, even, we can even surface that SLA in the portal so that, so that the end user knows we still have 24 hours to finish this request or 48 or 72, and we will get to it at an appropriate time. One other thing that I forgot to show you is if I go back into the portal, uh, something nice, at least it should be happening. Um, I may have turned this off earlier, but if I am changing my name, um, name change, there we go. I have a suggested article popping up right here automatically saying, hey, do you want to know more about a name change request? And then I can open that article again. So I can search for that article, or as I'm trying to fill out a ticket, it's going to serve up that article and say, hey, here's some, here's some information for you. In the service management indus industry, that's called shifting left. We're trying to, 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 to provide more, more self-help where possible. <clears throat> A note of caution, service desks, just like any piece of technology, can be used in a very impersonal way. For example, I hate IVR phone systems. They never work the way that I need them to whenever I call my insurance company. I can't stand it. So we definitely want to be empathetic to the user when we're designing these service projects. Like, that's really important. Um, service desks do create a wall between people that serve and people that need help. And so it better be a really cozy wall with lots of pretty graffiti and maybe a little coffee bar sitting in front of it so that we're happy to wait on that side of the wall waiting for information. One other thing is that often we set up these service desks adjacent to a team's internal work tracking project. The service desk serves as, as an intake triage area and then the team can do other work in their own project. We see this a lot with things like engineering and, and IT. And if you need more help doing that, I'm happy to hop on a call and you know, describe that in further detail to you. All right, the last demo for today before we hit um, some more free, free webinars and some Q&A is centralized knowledge management. <coughs> Excuse me. So who is this for? This is for everyone. Um, everybody has knowledge management problems, or at least most teams that I've ever met to, including my own. Um, so the problem is we're always wondering, where do I find this information? Is this information up to date? Do I even know this information exists? And the solution is central organized portals for knowledge. And for that, we're going to use Confluence. So here we are back in the tool. Now we are in Confluence again. I'm in the same marketing space that I was before that I was showing you off. But now instead of my project dashboard, I'm going to be on a team homepage. And this is a page where we can update information for our team as that information changes. It's very easy to update. I just come to this edit icon and when I'm done, I click publish. But here we have an about marketing section. We have something auto generating a list of anything that was updated and when it was updated. So for example, apparently uh, recently I updated current ads and pricing policies. Down here, we've got contact information. We've got information about our team. We've got a calendar like I showed you before down here. Uh, and this is all looking kind of weird because the blow up it obviously displays much better when I'm not making it giant for, for a webinar. And then here, this is, this is what, what I love about Confluence and knowledge sharing. I don't have to put all of the information in Confluence. I can just put links to information in Confluence. So here I have my frequently used resources and I've got my brochures which is going to a Google Drive. And then I have all of my brochures here. Or I've got my, I've got my logos, which goes to Google Drive, or, or this you know, jumping to my swag folder. Then I have specific documents. I've got, I've got a document here that, um, whoops, that, um, <laughs> that takes me to my homepage, but really would take me to a set of accounting passwords 
or, or a current ad pricing doc. And then I've got resources pointing to other departments in the company. And, and we can also search every page in this area. So that's an example of just a team homepage, centrally managed information for your team. We showed you the project dashboard earlier, but let's look at some other options. Meeting notes. We can track meeting notes here in Confluence, and then this page is actually aggregating all of our meeting notes from the past, aggregating tasks from those meeting notes and decisions from those meeting notes. Tasks and decisions are smart objects that can be aggregated into another page. So all I have to do is come to this meeting notes page and I will see everything that still needs to be done. We can also link external products that we use. I love uh, using Trello, for example. I'm a big fan of Trello. I'm also a big fan of Miro. If you guys have never used Miro, Miro is a wonderful online whiteboarding tool. And here I've got a live Miro board. I'm not logged in, so I can't edit it. But if I was, I could I could move my I could move my stickies uh, around, and I can and I can you know change what I need to change. So I can I can see my entire you know product plan in Miro embedded here in Confluence. So again, I, I'm just pointing all of my team members to one space and not pointing them to a hundred spaces. I got ahead of myself. Uh, this, is, this is the Trello demo that I thought that I was going to next. Uh, this is a live Trello board. If you've never used Trello before, it is wonderful. Uh, you, can, you can organize weddings and you, you can organize, I organize a funeral once with, with that Trello or, or, or an exchange program for, for um, high schoolers. This is a bunch of cards, kind of like Jira. And these cards have information and these cards live in lists and I can move these cards across lists. But here I am doing it in Trello, but I'm actually in Confluence. Lastly, we've got um, an example of Google Docs coming into, G coming into Confluence Cloud here. This is a live Google Doc that I can edit straight from here in Confluence if I have permissions to. And I'm sorry, um, that's a live Google Sheet over there. And then over here, I, ha I, ha I have a live Google Doc that I can also edit directly from Confluence as well. Yeah, so hopefully that seems appealing for helping get all the information together. You still obviously need someone to curate this knowledge and to weed your garden of knowledge, as it were, um, when you do this, but, but now you have the tools to keep it all together. <clears throat> all right, so let's, let's move towards closing this out. Um, we're gonna do Q&A, but before we do that, I wanna do a soft close and talk about upcoming events and just say thank you for coming. So first of all, um, if you have any questions about anything you saw today, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my, my email is brian.dar, brian with a Y, at xbm.com. You can also grab this LinkedIn uh, QR code and stalk me over there or send a message from there. And then I, I wanna talk briefly about some of the upcoming free uh, and, and, and paid classes that we have coming up. We have a webinar on, on Atlassian governance next Thursday. We have a workshop that is all about um, uh, cloud migration coming up. This is a fantastic four hour workshop. If you are migrating from server to cloud, we highly recommend coming. We're basically gonna set you up with everything you might need to make that happen. Uh, and you can get more information on that on our homepage on um, xbm.com. You can sign up for it there. Let me just show you that really quick because this is a, a really cool free offering. Uh, if you come to xtm.com, our, our major events here, Trivia for Teens and our Cloud Migration Workshop. Oh, I'm sorry. The workshop is actually July 21st, but you can apply for that here and you can sign up for our, for our um, remote trivia event here under sign up. Let me come back over here to the rest of the stuff. We also have um, paid Confluence and Jira boot camps. We have a free webinar on Jira Service Management Fundamentals. We have a paid Advanced Roadmaps class. We have a paid Jira Service Management Bootcamp class. We have a free Service Management for ITSM webinar, a free Portfolio Management webinar, a free Jira Line webinar, and a free Confluence webinar. Um, so let me, just before we get to Q&A, say thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate your kind attention. I hope you got a lot out of this and that it was worth your time. 
And again, if you have any questions or you know want, want to talk, you know, inspiration about making these Atlassian tools work for you, please reach out. I'm more than happy to uh, to hop on a call with you. And with that, um, let's let's do Q and A. And if you don't have any questions, feel free to head on out and have a nice afternoon. All right. Let's see. Let's see if there's any questions. I'll wait about a minute for questions. I should really say 30 seconds a bit. It feels like so long when nothing's happening. All right. Well, if there's no questions, thank you guys again for attending. Um, look forward to seeing you out there uh, some other time. Oh, oh, and um, thank you for the thank you. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, have a good day, everybody, and uh, we'll be in touch.